Hi everybody, Carl Schuf here from Greensock. Today I'm going to show you how to use some powerful sublime text snippets that will allow you to code GSAP animations super fast. For instance, in sublime text I can simply write the word tween, hit tab, and then I can just tab to the target of this tween, which might be something like footer, tab over to the duration, one is fine, and then set some basic vars. Easy peasy. So what is a sublime text snippet? A snippet is basically a reusable block of code. It can easily be inserted into your code through the use of tab triggers. In addition, you can define tab stops which allow you to tab through all the parts of the code that you may need to edit. We'll start by showing you how to use snippets for creating basic tweens and then move on to snippets for specific methods. Alright, back in Sublime Text we have that tweenlight.to tween that we added. We're going to create a few more tweens just to show you exactly how easy this snippet is to use for creating basic tweens. Let's do a tween light from tween. I'm going to type the word tween, hit tab, it automatically creates a tween light tween for me, and I'm going to tab over to to, change it to from, and for my target element I might just use header, change the duration to 0.2, and for my vars do opacity 0. Tab again brings me to the end of the line. Perhaps I want to do a basic tween max tween. No problem, just start typing tween, hit tab, and now you'll see that light is selected, so I'll just start typing MAX, tab from the two over to the target element, maybe it's called info, change the duration, tab over to the vars, and maybe we'll just do a rotation of 360. It's as easy as that. All right, next we're going to talk about snippets for specific GSAP methods. Here we have a timeline light created that we're calling TL and there are many methods that you may use to chain together to create complex sequences of animations. So let's start by just saying TL and we're going to do a two method on this. I'm going to start typing TO, hit tab, and then voila. I can set my target element, I can change the duration, and for the vars I can say left of 200. Now the next time I tab you'll see that my cursor goes between that closing bracket and parenthesis. That's because with these timeline methods I also have the position parameter. Right now I'm just going to skip over that and you'll see that the next place my cursor goes to is the end of this line but there isn't a semicolon. Well that's because we're hoping that people are going to be chaining methods together. We want to make it easy for you. So if I hit return, tab again, I'm going to do another to tween, hit tab and voila Maybe my footer element does something like this, but I want it to wait a little longer. So again, I'm going to tab over to that position parameter and I can say I don't want this tween to start until 0.2 seconds after the end of the timeline. Tabbing again brings me to the end of this line. Again, no semicolon is there because it makes it very easy for me to chain these methods together. I have a snippet for from. Hit tab and you get the same thing. The target element, the duration, the vars, the position parameter, and then it brings you to the end. I'm not going to type in a bunch of dummy code for all the different snippets. I just want you to get a good idea of how to trigger the snippets and the functionality that they give you. Next we're going to do a from to tween. From to tweens require quite a bit of code because you're setting not only the starting vars but the ending vars. So I'm going to start writing from to, hit tab, and again I can set the element, the duration, and now I have the from vars which may be left of 200 and I want to specifically say we're going to end at a left of 300. Tab through the position parameter in the end and then I'm ready for my next tween. Next I'll show you the snippet that we have for stagger. So we're just going to do dot stagger and hit tab and you'll see that 2 is selected. So I can easily do a stagger 2 or a stagger from. For the target element, suppose I want to affect every element with a class of movies, I'm going to then change the duration to 0.5, and again the vars, I might just want to fade all these things out to an opacity of 0. Next, for the stagger 2, we have the stagger amount. So maybe I want to offset the start time of each of these tweens by 0.2 seconds. No problem. Tab again at the end of the line. Now, we also have stagger from to. For something like this we're going to do stagger from to hit tab and it not only allows me to select the elements that I'm going to be tweening, 
but we have the from vars and the to vars. So we'll ignore the fact that these things are already faded to an opacity of zero, and I can just say left 200, two vars, we'll say left 300. All right, and again, the stagger amount is ready for me to tab to and to set. If I wanted this tween to wait a little bit longer, again, we could then optionally add the position parameter and maybe put it at a label of movies out. Okay, so there we have a whole bunch of methods and snippets that work great with timeline light. Now, although they are optimized to work and be chained with timeline light, there's nothing stopping me from doing tween max dot stagger and then doing the uh, stagger two of tween max just like that. And I could even go so far as to say I can just do a tween light dot from two. So here I'm typing out tween max or tween light, but now I'm getting very specific for the method and the snippet that I want to trigger. So I can do tween light from two, set the target element, the duration, the from vars, and the two vars. Uh, we also have tween light dot set where I want to do perhaps a zero duration tween on something. Remember though, if you're using these snippets on tween max or tween light objects, you'll have to put your semicolons in. Please keep your code clean. Installing snippets in Sublime Text is basically as easy as copying files to the proper folder. On a Mac, what you're going to do is start in your user's library folder, go into application support, you'll see a Sublime Text 2 folder, and inside the Sublime Text 2 folder, you will have a Packages folder. So if you're on a Windows machine, you'll want to find this Packages folder, wherever that might be, and you're going to scroll down to a Users directory, and inside of there, I have a GSAP folder that contains the various snippets that I'm going to be giving you guys. All right, so these are all the snippets, and what you can do is once you find your user folder, just drag in the GSAP folder that has all the snippets, or you could put all the snippets in there loose or in the directory, however you want to name it. All right, as long as the snippets are lower than your user directory, Sublime Text 2 will find them. You may have to restart Sublime Text 2 after editing the snippets, but you should be good to go. All right, guys, enjoy.